It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Merciful God, our Father, we bless your name. We thank you so much for having mercy on us. Thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power of his resurrection. Thank you, Father, for marking us out before this world was ever formed and writing our names in heaven in the book of life. We praise you. We give you glory. We thank you for having mercy on us and counting us faithful and putting us in your ministry. We, Father, in Jesus' name, ask you that you will bless today. I pray that you will, those who are nearest to destruction, I ask in Jesus' name that you will stretch forth your mighty hand, O oh God, and that you will deliver, that you'll save, that you redeem. Those who, who, who are living in, and, and in, in the spirit of slumber, I ask in Jesus' name that you will awaken them, Father, with your anointing, with your spirit, with your word, and cause them to hear the voice of the Lord God. Get glory today, I pray in Jesus' name. Get glory, move in our midst by your Holy Spirit, and let every heart, Father, be prepared to receive the word of God. And we give you glory, and we praise and thank you for all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus, that's the key. Everything that we have, it, it is. It's, 
everything we have belongs to him. And as, as, as David, was it David or Solomon or both at, at different times who made the statement that as they were offering offerings to, to the living God, maybe dedicating the temple, I, I don't know exactly what the occasion was at this moment, can't recall it. But they just declare to God that everything that we offer, we thank you, you've blessed us. You've blessed your people to be able to offer of this magnitude, this sort. And, and what can we offer you that's not yours already? To understand that, to, to understand that, that everything, even the, uh, the very breath that we breathe, the air that we breathe, the sight that we've received, the life that we've received, it all belongs to God. The lost and saved alike are God's. Did you know that? All souls are man, said the Lord. Everything belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's kettle of a thousand hills. Silver and gold is Lord. All, all this, everything is God's. And he lets us live on this planet, his creation that he's made. He, as his new, cre his new creation in Christ Jesus, having come to know him because of his divine plan, to let us partake of his salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about the goodness of God. And who wouldn't want to live for him? Praise him and worship him. And just adore God and praise God for his goodness. As David said, for his mercy does endure forever. All that we have is because of him. All of who we are is because of him. And we, we, we do, and, and, and I thank God for what he's done. We, and we've never preached, I've never heard, I used to, matter of fact, I used to hear, hear the overseer uh, uh, say, Bishop used to say that, uh, that we, this, this life is not just a bed of roses, and it's not. It's not, we're gonna have, you know, so don't, don't, don't get frustrated when trials come. Amen. When things don't go your way. You know, it's, it's, that's the way it is. Satan's not going to sit idly by and just watch us enjoy blessings of God, you know, and, and we're praising the Lord. Everything's just coming up. It's not going to be like that all the time. But the, whew, the times with, with, with God, the, the goodness of God, the good things of life, the blessings of life from God far outweigh anything we can ever go through, experience, or anything we can ever imagine on, on planet Earth. So the Bible teaches us, saints of God, Proverbs 1, says to uh, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, out of your heart, are the issues of life. You got to be, become what, whoever you are in your spirit, in your heart. Your, thought, your spirit should control your thoughts. You don't have to accept every thought that comes to your mind, because we get all kinds of thoughts. And we, we we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, God willing. All kinds of thoughts, and not all the thoughts are godly. Some are extremely ungodly. Some thoughts come because of our own e e emotional activity or what, what we feel and what we, our, our, our selfishnesses, you know? And some come directly from Satan. And there, then again, there are the thoughts that come to, to our minds by the working of, of the inner man, the new creation in Christ Jesus. So the thoughts that come down man for, from the Holy Ghost, God's voice will speak to us and we have to be able to hear it and recognize it. So we have to guard our hearts, guard your minds. Be careful what you let into your mind. Be careful the thoughts you entertain. Be careful the lifestyle that you entertain. Be careful. The Bible says, he, Jesus, I believe he said that. Be careful how you hear. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you let go into your mind. The Bible speaks of the time coming during the time of the tribulation and revelation. Where he said, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of, I believe, the Antichrist or the false prophet came out of the mouth. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you receive. Be careful what you use for entertainment. If it's ungodly, 
Be careful. Let it alone. Out of it are the issues of life. I believe it's in Ephesians where the Bible teaches us this and, and we're going to get on into it. Ephesians 4th chapter. Very quickly. Y'all with me? Okay, let's, let's, let's go with it then. We're going to roll with it here. Ephesians 4. And I'm just going to read a little bit. Ephesians 4.21. And it says, if so be that you have heard him, if you've heard from God, you, you've heard him, you've heard his voice, and you have been taught by him, listen, by his Holy Spirit, by the anointing of God, the Holy Ghost, taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, the former lifestyle, Put off that former lifestyle uh, concerning the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Paul is speaking of the, the law of the spirit of life and, 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 and the law of God, keeping keep the commandments and, and the new life that we live through faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I, I, I agree, I submit that the law is good, the commandments are all good. And they, and they are, they were, they're still good. But it said, he spoke of how, how the law, how sin deceived him by the law, through the law, but, and, and, and by, by that it slew him. Sin used something good to deceive. How can sin deceive you? By thinking that you're doing the right thing or thinking that there are certain things have been approved okay by God. In Paul's, in Paul's case, he was deceived at one time in his life as a Pharisee in believing that his own righteousness and living the life of a Pharisee, a morally good, self-righteous, God-fearing man, that deceived him into thinking that, okay, I'm pleasing God. When he was totally out of pocket. Made him believe that in persecuting the church, he was doing, doing something for the cause of God. Our lust, our deceits, the, thing, the, the things that we desire to have and do in life, our pleasures that we sometimes, and, and, and that's pleasure in life, you know, no, no doubt. And that's uh, pleasures allowed by God, of, of, of course. Fellowship with God. But the lifestyle of that old man, is, it is deceitful. And he says, for us to be renewed in the spirit of our minds and that we put on the new man, that we take on the authority, that we don't ignore God. We don't ignore this new creation. If so be that we have received a new creation, a new birth. We have been born again in this, and we, in this new person, this new, this new me that I never knew. Now lives. Let's live after, after the, the, the spirit of God through the new man. And it says, this, put on this, this new creature in Christ Jesus that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So putting away lying. Do away with lying. Why? The lion is of the devil. Yes, yes. Satan is the father of lies. Listen, and since when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. He, he, he's talking about himself, and, ev and, and everything about him is, is about falsehood and deceit. So putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry. Listen. So you mean God, he, he gives us that space. To where we can, because things do affect us emotionally. And sometimes we can't have a righteous anger. We know when we're being treated unfairly. We know when other people are, are suffering injustice. And it makes you angry. When our families, our homes, our lives are being assaulted, Yes, you can have that. You can get angry, but don't sin. Don't sin. Now, if somebody's wanting to 
wanted to do like a home invasion for you to protect your home. That's not sin. No, not at all. Be angry. So sometimes because we, we still live, we're in this world but not of it. We live in this human flesh, but this human flesh, this old man is not the one who's to have authority and dictate the way I respond to life's ills, life's, life's problems, life's troubles. It's, no, we, we live by the, the, by the new man. So be angry, but sin not. Be angry. Someone makes sure it doesn't mean you have to cuss them out. Doesn't mean that you, you have to swell up. You want to fight. <laughs> That's a horrible thing. Be angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down on. Now, this is for believers. Yes, this is not for unbelievers. Because unbelievers are going to do what they want to do. This is only for people who believe, who have been saved. Not just, and not just being those who say, well, I believe. I believe. I, I, uh, I've, been, I've been saved. I've been in church a long time. It's not for those kind of people. It's for people who believe. Yes, yes, who have believed. Praise God in the resurrected life of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have that life in us. Be angry, but don't sin. Why? What, what's all this leading up to? Be angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Don't dare. Lay your head down in your bed and, you, and, and think, and sometimes people do. They think that they please God. That I'm all right with God because this is me. And I've been church, in church a long time. I've been in church two days, two years, two, two decades, two centuries. And God accepts me disallowing his word. I don't have to hear his word. I don't have to obey his word. I don't have to love anybody. I don't have to, 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 to take low and humble myself before God. Oh, man. Be angry, sin. Don't dare lay down and go to sleep at night knowing that you have malice or hatred, resentment in your heart for anybody. Yeah. Unforgiveness. And you think you, you, you're okay with God. You know, I'll go to sleep. I'm all right. I'm going to wake up in glory one day. Should I die in my sleep? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake up in, in, in paradise. Mm -mm. Come on. What have you received? What have you received? That kind of thing you did not receive from God. Amen. That you didn't receive from Jesus. And it's in the Bible too. That, that tell you, Bible tells you plain. That didn't come from God. You didn't receive that from him. But if, as, as, as this first scripture we read said, if so be that you've known him, if you've known him, if, if you've really known him and, and, and heard him, as the truth is in Jesus, that's what you receive. And that's what you live by. You don't live because of, of your emotional ideas and what you feel. or You, you feel like somebody's done you wrong or what. You better forgive that person. Doesn't mean you have to tolerate wrongdoing. Doesn't mean that. But forgive that person. But let me tell you what unforgiveness will, will do to you to destroy you. You already know that. You know, Jesus talked about it. Unforgiveness will destroy you. Malice will, will destroy you. Entertaining evil thoughts will destroy you. Living in darkness will destroy you. And you can live in darkness sitting in, in a house lit up full of 100 watt bulbs. People still use those. Lit up, but to sit in, the, in, a, in a dark state of mind, it's living in darkness, thinking evil, 
that all that does is prompt you and makes you become prey, easy pickings for Satan. And people don't see that. We can always see what's wrong with everybody else. What's wrong with my husband? What's wrong with my wife? What, what's wrong with everybody else? What, but, but what about me? What's going on with me? Be, let not the sun go, don't dare lie down with that kind of mess in your mind, that kind of hatred and malice and jealousy, envy, whatever it is. I said, her, sin is a, it a deceiver. That's what the devil, that's, that's what that, the devil is, is not his name, is it? That's who he is. He's a deceiver. He's evil. His name is Satan, which means what? Adversary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's our adversary. Yes, sir. And he uses what he is, he, the, everything that caused him to get kicked out, kicked out of heaven, he uses on people. People, people fall for it. They're too proud to listen to God, too proud to obey God. He wanted to be equal with God. You know, it's, it's crazy. Don't listen to Satan. And we give Satan, and, and, and I hate to say it, Sometimes people give Satan more attention than they do God. They hear his voice and respond to it more than they respond to the voice of God. And but still, some, see, he's so sneaky, so deceitful that he, he's so deceitful he makes them think, you have to listen to God. Just keep listening to me. You're right in what you're doing. God, love, God loves you. He's pleased with you. While you walk in this, Lay, let not the sun go down on your wrath. And then it says in the 27th verse, neither give place to the devil. Amen. What does that mean? Yeah, don't leave the, don't leave the door open, don't give him op opportunity. Don't give him access to you. That's the whole thing. Don't leave, him, don't leave the door open for him to enter, because he will. Don't give him opportunity. He does what people ought to be doing in a, in a good way. You don't have to always wait on somebody to give you opportunity. You can create, you make your own opportunities. You can do that. Prepare yourself, prepare yourself for when opportunity does present. You're already ready. You have vision. You're visionary. You're a faith person. You can create opportunity. So Satan creates opportunity for evil. He creates opportunity for destruction. And all he needs to do is get you to listen to one word. Or give consideration to one question. And we think it's us. We just, what we think is what we, for whatever we've experienced, our experiences have taught us certain things. It's Satan. Just like he did, he did Eve. He said, did God say? So what did that do? Created doubt. Begin to question because he asked a question. So we begin to question the validity of our relationships. Uh, God, we don't have to live with Jesus. I, I can live like this and God be pleased with me because, no. Mm -mm. I don't have to love each other. And, and, and saints of God, when Jesus said you love one another, when, and, as I've loved you, he meant that not just for some. Amen. Come on now. Amen. For all. Amen. For your husband or wife. Amen. They're saved. That's that brother or sister in Christ. They deserve the same love. Yes, sir. By the grace of God. They deserve the same forgiveness. And there are people who, sometimes people will hate you and you've not done anything to them. Amen. I know that for a fact. You've never done anything, to them, but they'll hate you. 
because of a perception. Yes, sir. Satanic. Demonic. All that is motivated by, do you know how many spirits there are? I don't. There are so many. Innumerable. All kinds. Somebody name some. We, we mentioned one. Spirit of what? Slumber. That's one. You can, you can need to talk to God. You can need to hear, 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 hear the voice of God. You can need relief. You can need response. You can need, need an answer. And get on your knees to pray. And now, Father. <laughs> go to sleep. Come to church to hear the word of God. Need to hear it. Satan doesn't want you to go to, get sleepy. Go to sleep. Now, because people get, now you're supposed to rest, but there's a time yes, for everything under the sun. Come, and church ain't it. <laughs> this ain't the place. <laughs> Praise God Almighty. It's high time, as, as the scripture says, that, that we're waking out of sleep. It is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wake up. God said this. He said, okay, give no place to the devil. Don't give Satan access to your mind. Amen. Don't give him access to your life. If he gets in your mind, he's got access to everything about you. And what's his agenda? Steal, kill, destroy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And people can't see it. And Satan tears people in his grip. And they just can't see it. And that's why it says on down here, look, 30th verse, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Whereby if you're saved, you're, you're sealed upon the day of redemption. So let all bitterness, yeah. what is bitterness? Ill will toward others, like malice, yeah. anger, unhappiness, yeah. because of, of that, that root of bitterness. Yeah. The Bible speaks that how that root of bitterness will defile you. It will corrupt your whole life. He says that root of bitterness has defiled many. But let all bitterness, listen, you got to get it. And wrath, what is wrath? Anger. Wrath because of, 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 of can evolve into revenge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wrath, anger, I'm going to do something about this thing. I'm angry. And I'm going to explode on somebody. This is God's word. Satan will tell you something different. He'll say, well, you got a right to feel like that. No, you don't. No, you don't. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. What is clamor? Loud stuff and argumentative and talking and all this stuff. All that's Satan. This is, not talk, this is not God operating this stuff. This is Satan. And clamor and evil speaking. What evil speaking? Evil do, about doing harm to other people. Yes, uh, speaking in certain ways that will cause harm to other people. Let all evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now is that the word of God? Yes, I believe it is. Yes, it's the word of God. With all malice with all desire to hurt anything, anybody. Put it away. And the thing that, that's, and he always, and it's funny how Satan wants you, now he's the one who should be hated. He's a master of misdirection. Have you focused your anger, your wrath, your, 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 your just meanness on people who love you and care about you. Well, he gets away scot-free. That's what we tell people all the time. We, I think we told a young couple, uh, 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 
Mr. Daniels, he, he said, we, we have to address him as Mr. Daniels now since he got married. Mr. Daniels and his wife, S Sister Stalencia. I think we told him too. We tell everybody that think, when things pop up in life, anything that assaults your relationship, assaults your marriage, don't turn on each other. Turn on that thing that tried to bring division or trouble into your marriage. Fight it together with Satan. He doesn't want you to see. No, don't turn on me. Don't use the word of God. Don't cut me up with the word of God. Don't rebuke me with the word of God. Don't rebuke those demons that I send to, 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 to tap your life, your marriage, your family, your, your kids. Don't, don't, don't turn on that. Don't see me as I hide in, in camouflage. Turn on each other. Mm -mm. Put it away. Now this is the word. That all bitterness, wrath, wrath, anger, clam, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and saints of God. Saints, now this is talking to saints. This is talking to real believers, not church members, church goers, but believers, saints of God. Be ye what? Kind. Hallelujah. One to another. Be kind. One to another, what, tenderhearted? Hallelujah, you don't think we, okay, don't get me going. Try a little tenderness, y'all remember that song? <laughs> <laughs> be kind. Some people don't know what it is to be kind. Not even the people they live with. To be kind one to another, tender hearted, to be moved by somebody else who needs your mercy or needs you to understand, needs you to just hear, that, just listen. Come on now. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave you. So you believe that? You believe grace? You, be, you believe the word of God? You believe that if you receive the gospel? You believe your sins are forgiven? But you don't believe it enough to forgive somebody else. And sometimes we, we say that. We use that word forgiveness loosely because sometimes nobody's done anything to you to forgive. That's, we, you just don't like them. Uh, Satan's put planted a, a seed, a corruptible, rotten, evil, demonic seed of thought in your mind to destroy you and the individual. Forgive even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. That's some heavy metal right there. That's pretty heavy. Why? Why is that so? Now, I, I, I have to read. I, I said that this was, I have to read in, in the book of James. Now, James, the, the third chapter. Y'all with me? Yes, when you do go to sleep, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. I can't stand so-and-so, I hate so-and-so, I'll never forgive so what, whatever the case may be. Have a big fallout with everybody. Sometimes you can't sleep, not because of what people have done or said, because of all that emotional and really spiritual, that emotional conflict that's going on in, inside of you. The anger. The spirits, demonic spirits, work, and you don't see it. But when you are able to go to sleep, you lay your head down, close your eyes, and get a little shut eye, get a little rest. And Satan's there stroking your head. Yeah, I got you. Go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. 
Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And he's looking at your, your life. Your plans are being distorted because of that bitterness, just the hope for your life. That sometimes you, we, those bad seeds, those bad thoughts, that evil destroys the hope for our life. The Bible even tells married people. I don't know if I got into it with you. It always tells married people that, that you, you're not to be against one another. You have to fight one another. Husbands can say your wife to weaker, weaker vessels and, and finally be, be heirs together, uh, be together. Yes, like in the grace of God and in, in, in the life that God gives us so that your prayers will not be hindered. what? Hindered. hindered. You'll be hindered. You're not going nowhere with God in life. You know, you want God to be with what you want to do in life, but you won't even do what he said in your family. To have that strength, that unity, yes, sir. that love of God in you, in your the love that you can share with others. We're not to spread hatred. Yes, We're to generate love and understanding peace. Show our children how to live. Tell them how, whether, they, whether they want to. And that's, 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 let them do that, but you do what God wants you to do. Do what God wants you to Live how God wants you to live. Think, saints of God, think how God says you should think. Yes, sir. Amen. A merry heart does good like a medicine. To help your body, help your life, being happy. The Bible speaks in James about people forgiving one another, loving each other, confessing their faults one to another. So, so the, and, and then he says, on top of all that, and pray for each other yes, so that you can be healed. Yes, you don't have anything against. But James tells us this too in James, the third chapter. Starting with the 13th verse, it says, who is a wise man? Wise now. A lot of foolish people in this world, a lot of fools in the world, you know that. A lot, of, a lot of fools that don't believe that this is God's word. Then a lot of fools that say they believe it, but they don't need to do it, so they don't really believe it. You know? No, but who's a wise man? There's some wise people, praise God, in this life, in this world. But who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation Yes, a, a conversation and a good, the conversation of his life, a good lifestyle. Let him show out of a good conversation his works. So this is talking about his, the way he lives, right? The way he or she lives. Let them show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter, there that word is again, bitter, envying and strife in your hearts. Now look at that. Bitterness, envying, and strife. Three horrible things that's not produced by God's spirit. If you have bitterness inside of you, Strife, you're argumentative, you're contentious, you believe nothing. You don't have, you don't listen to anybody. And sometimes people go so far as to say just that. I don't care what anybody says. This is not, I know, I, I know. I, I, can't nobody tell me nothing. Okay, all right. You're painting yourself into a corner that you won't be able to get out of. That paint won't dry. falling into the trap of Satan by denying God's authority in your life, by denying God's word, by not submitting to God's word. So what are you doing? You're giving Satan access to your life. Something, somebody's going to be in authority in your life, in your mind, one way or the other. And if you don't accept the authority of God, God's word in your life, what are you doing? 
If you're not hearing the voice of God, like Jesus said, said again, my sheep hear my voice. If you don't hear his voice, whose are you listening to? The devil, Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning, wiser than man, wiser, man, it's just, but his wisdom, balance, he corrupted it. Corrupted his beauty, corrupted his wisdom, and everything. Pride. It got him. And that's what gets a lot. Of, this is me. What, what is that? So who are you? Who, who? Pride. And he uses it. And it gets, it doesn't get bad. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So it says, if you have this, this bitterness, if you have envying, and envy is like a, a, a we call it a cruel form of jealousy. Yes, envy, it does you harm to have it. And it does other people harm. If you live with a, with a jealous, envious person, a person who's always bitter, that whole house is going to be in darkness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's going to be no peace in that home. Yes. None. It's the kind of place that Jesus said, if you go into a house and the son of peace ain't there, you better let your peace return to you and leave. Just, just leave. If the peace of God, if the word of God is not welcome in a place, you don't need to, what you gonna do about it? Mm -mm. So the Bible now, and I didn't write it. The word of God says plainly, if you have bitter envying and strife, this contention, in your hearts, in your minds, glory not and lie not against the truth. Amen. Praise the Jesus, praise the Lord. Glory not. I'm saved, I'm just, God has done, no, no. And don't lie against the truth. Don't try to justify ungodly actions. Don't justify, justify an ungodly train of thought. Never try to justify sin. Where does sin begin? In heaven, in the heart, in the mind of Satan. It all starts in the heart. Glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom that you're using descended not from above. It didn't come. So there's an ungodly kind of wisdom, right? Like there's an ungodly kind of love, right? Yeah. We were talking to somebody about that the other day. When the Bible says you love one another, don't love like Cain, who was of what? The wicked. He was of the devil. And the kind of love he had permitted him to kill his brother. He was of that wicked one and he slew his brother. See, if you have that kind of love, I love God. No, you, it's not God you're loving. You're loving wickedness, you're loving Satan, you're loving his way and evil. Street wisdom d does not work as the wisdom of God. The Bible even says that the wrath of man doesn't work the righteousness of God. So who, who, what, are people, what are people thinking they're not? They're not. They don't think. They just respond and live in that soulish Adam, old man Adam, Barabbas kind of nature. If you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth, because this wisdom that you're using did not come from God. Take that. If you don't believe that, I feel so sorry for you. This wisdom descends not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, it's fleshly, it's carnal minded, and it is what? Devilish. Told you it's in the Bible. All this, it's demonic. It's devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And where you find confusion, there's evil's working. It's working. 
But he lets you know that the wisdom that is from God, the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Hallelujah. Then it's what? Peaceable. Even in times of disagreement, it's peaceable. We're looking for some kind of reconciliation here. Peaceable. What? It's pure, peaceable, and it's also, this wisdom from God is gentle. Come on now. Not arrogant, cruel, mean, kind. Say hurtful things. No. It's easy to be entreated. Oh, somebody help me with that. The wisdom that comes from God is easy to be entreated. What does that mean? It's approachable. We, we used to say just so it's easy to get along with. Well, yes, it is. It's easy to make reconciliation because they, they're wise in the Lord. They accept the spirit of reconciliation. Easy to be entreated. And it's full of what? No, it's full of anger and unforgiveness. It's hard-hearted. It's not gentle, it's hard-hearted. Not full of mercy. It's cruel. Full of mercy and what else? Good fruits. And what are, what are the good fruits? You, the only ones you can think of is the, the fruits of the Spirit that come from God. So I'm going to get those right quick and read them. Just read them. Just read that. That one. Full, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown. It's sown. It's a part of them. It's sown in their lives. It's sown in peace of them that do what? That make peace. You have no peace without the peace of God. And what are these good fruits? And, and every believer has a spirit in them that's automatically going to produce these fruits of the spirit in them. Yes, sir. Automatic, it's coming out. God's, praise the Lord, I thank God that he's got our backs. He's got yes, us. Sir. God's got us. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God's got those yes. that belong to him. Yes. The Bible, didn't we talk about that let, the other week about let him that names the name of Christ do what? Depart, Depart from, from iniquity. Yes, sir. Depart from ungodliness. And ungodliness doesn't mean that you have to be on the street corner cutting, slicing, dicing, and shooting. It doesn't mean that. Ungodly attitude, ungodly spirits, malice, resentment, unforgiveness, hatred, that's demonic. You know where most of demon activity goes on? In churches. <laughs> I just say in God's church, because God's church is in the midst of the church world. In the midst of churchdom, God has a church. His bride, is, he washes them. And we're constantly being washed. Yes, sir. Believers want to be washed. Yes, sir. We don't we, No, Every day we want to be better. Yes, we don't want to wake up in the same filth that we were in yesterday. Yes, now, man's polluted with garbage. Yeah, I said it. This is Revelation talks about it. We're not going to get that. But uh, yeah, Babylon the great has fallen. It's fallen, become the, the hold of every foul and unclean spirit in the habitation of devils. That's what demonic activity is, a lot of it. And religious folks, you don't want to be a part of that. Praise God. Get God's word in you. Expel, denounce everything that's demonic Everything that's carnal-minded, get rid of it. 
Get God's word in you. Drink of his spirit. Be filled every day with his spirit. I could pull this water out. This whole glass, I could fill it up. Fill this glass up and pour it out into another glass and then half fill this with rocks or pebbles and try to fill this again with the same water poured out, I can't get it all in there. Yes, sir. Too much trash. Yes, sir. You can't be filled with the Spirit of God and hold on to trash. Yes. Can't hold on to garbage in your life and I keep tip. We say it all the time. God will never deliver you from anything that you hold on to. If you want to keep it, so be, he'll let you have it. You got it. You have to make that decision to turn loose and to grab hold of God and, and all and everything that's about him. You want to stay like you are? So be it. He'll leave you like that if that's what you want. You have to want him bad enough to turn everything loose. When the Bible speaks of people being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They, they relinquished. Submitted, gave themselves living sacrifice. They wanted to be filled with God's spirit. They even wanted to be purged and cleansed. If there be any evil way in me, get it out. Expose me to it if I, don't, if I miss it. So I can get rid of it. Praise God. Brother, read those fruits of, of the Spirit. Yes, sir. Galatians 5 and 22. Galatians 5 and, and 22, the yes, book sir. of Galatians. Now, we still reading the Word of God. We, then yes, we go sir. to a self-help book. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, but this is Life for Dummies. You ever seen those books? Yes, sir. Different subjects for dummies? dummies. Yes, sir. No. 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 We're in the word. We're in God's word. Yes, sir. And this is what saints of God stay with God's word. Because if you don't, you can think you're smart. You can have all, all, all the, you can think you're wise. Well, Satan, he, he, his wisdom was corrupted. But if you don't have this in you, you are nothing but pray for the devil. You are, you've left yourself wide open for him to have access to you, your life, your mind, everything about you. Galatians, let, let's, let's, let's go here. Then we're going to get a couple more right quick. Galatians 5, 22. Galatians 5 and 22. What am I doing? Okay. All right. All right, everybody got it. Now, and this is what every believer no matter where they are, they don't have to be able to speak your language. They don't have to look like you. They might sing different songs of praise about Jesus than, than we do. But they believe his word. They have been filled with his spirit and that Holy Spirit of God produces the same thing in them if they live in Antarctica as it does in us here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and if you feel, and you know that you, th this isn't being produced in your life, well, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, then what? None of He's his. none of his. None of his. Let's read, brother. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is... No, okay, ooh, fruit. Okay, what, what is fruit, by the way? We, when we speak of fruit, we're, we're thinking about uh, apples and oranges, bananas, and that, that kind of stuff, you know. Stuff we can find in the supermarket. Fruit is something produced. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. And we label those kind of things as being fruit in the food chain. So what the Spirit produces in a believer, what the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, sir. 
The, the, the Spirit produces this, like apple seeds are gonna produce apple trees. Yes, sir. Regardless, you can put it in the ground and pray for pears. You'll never get it. Yes, sir. Never. It's not gonna happen. The Bible speaks of wheat and tares. What's the difference? We talk in, in the wheat and tares that resemble wheat so much. Tares cannot produce fruit, cannot produce wheat. That's not what they are. That's not who they are. You got a lot of people in, in churches, in the church world, they cannot produce fruit because they don't belong to God. They're not his. They can't produce what his spirit produces because his spirit is not in them. And we try to make allowances. We try to make excuses and clean stuff up for folks. Stop doing that. Yes, sir. Stop trying to justify wickedness yeah. and rebellion. Forget that. It's wrong. The fruit of the spirit, so what the spirit produces in every believer's life is what? Love. 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 Automatically. You can't help but love. And it's not just loving a few people. You might have some people that you're closer to than others, but you love everybody. You love the body of saints of God. You love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You, 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 you love you, you love. The kids, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you love their families. Yes, sir. Love one another as I've loved you. You've loved enough and you love enough to mortify that old man, to live unto God, to live unto Jesus. And this spirit automatically in the life of a believer, the spirit of God produces love. Think about it. Do you have it? The love of God. God's love. If you don't, I feel sorry for you. That's the first one, and we had that in the message on love. We talked about love not too long ago. About loving people. About love. Yes, what God, that's what he came to do. To give, to give us. Gave his life for us. And then to, to resurrect. Be resurrected by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God. And he gives us of himself through the anointing. Of the Christ through his anointing. The Bible speaks of his anointing being in us, his spirit being in us. It produces love automatically. Love. Go ahead. Joy. Joy. What is joy? Mm -hmm. Gladness. Gladness. That's, yes, that's, that's joy. Real. Well, being happy, full. Not caught up in misery all the time. Negativity all the time. Unhappy. Always bordering on depression. Nothing's ever right. Just, just something's wrong. Just, just stuff all the time. Inside of you. Well, you can't put the finger on what's but, but this, you, just you have no, no joy. And Jesus, he talked about that. He came to give you. He said, I came to give you that. Came to give us peace. Yes, sir. The fruit, the spirit automatically produces love in a believer's life. It automatically produces joy. Yes, sir. Gladness. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Gladness that supersedes everything else that's going on in your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gladness that, that allows you. We've had some tragic events in our families here, here lately that allows you you might not go around just jumping up and down and skipping and, 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 and clapping hands and jumping up and down and saying yeah 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 hooray in the middle of tragedy but you have that peace yes, sir. and you have that gladness and your heart un understands the will and the way of God and, and you're thoroughly satisfied with God's will in your life. Joy. Yes, sir. You have joy. You have that gladness. You have peace. Yes, sir. What is peace? 
not being against anybody, not absence of conflict, that's good. Don't have conflict in your life, in your mind, in your family. You're not as, and you can't be at peace, but the Bible says as much as possible, you, you know, you follow peace with all men as much as, much as possible, as much as life in you. Everybody doesn't want to be at peace, but you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're not the hell raiser. You're the peacemaker. Yes, sir. That Jesus talked about. Blessed are the, did, did he say blessed are the hell raisers? No, sir. No, he did not. <laughs> no, sir. And some people think they, they blessed. They can be the biggest hell raiser ever put on a pair of shoes. <laughs> and think God's got them? God's got them? No. Mm -mm. Yes, sir. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Yes, sir. And they'll be called what? Those ones will be called the children of God. Yes, sir. He came to bring peace to us. So these are automatically fruits of the spirit. Yes, sir. Do you have them? Do they manifest themselves in you, through you, with you? Is the life of God manifest? That's what it's all about. Is the life of God, whom we say we know whom we have. We have this risen Christ in us. And he lives his life out through us. Is his life manifested in us? Love, joy, peace, automatically. Yes, sir. Long suffering. Oh, man, that's a good one right there. Yes, sir. Being able to go through some, some very bad times when, when necessary. You don't fall apart. You don't fall apart when trials come. When trials come, you, you do what you've always done. You trust God. You move in the will of God, by the will of God. You live, you live according to the word of God. You do the will of God for your life. Yes, sir. You operate according to his purpose for your life and wait, as Job says, on your change to come. Yes, sir. That's what you do. Yes, sir. You're able to endure. Yes, sir. Read, brother. Gentleness. What? That, that, there's that word again. Gentleness. Listen, yes, and this is the fruit of God's spirit. Yes, sir. Are you a gentle person? Can you be gentle? Are you kind? Are you confident? Read, brother. Goodness. Goodness. Hallelujah. Read. Faith. Faith. Auto automatically, you believe God. Yes, sir. You trust God. Enough to obey him. You receive him. You receive his word. You receive his will for your life that you find in the word of God. And you live in that. You walk in that. And never take, take your eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. You always obey him. You live. You trust him enough to obey him. Faith. Read. Meekness. Meekness. Oh, what is What is meekness? Humility? Yes, sir. Humility? No, not, it's not always got to be about you. Amen. Not what somebody did to me. Ah, not me. I never. Uh, uh. Temperance. Yes, having self-control. Yes, sir. Not too quick to fly off the handle all the time. The Bible tells me, and I got to say, the anger rests where. Well. That's the truth. I believe this book now, and and, and I keep telling folks this will help you discern. It will. It was, it's, it's like, God, he, that's the gift of discernment, and there are things that God shows you just through his word. Yes, discernment 101, right here. Yes, sir. Listen, temperance, self-control, and against such, there is no law. Yes, sir. That forbids us to do anything. And... And they that are Christ. Listen, listen, they that are Christ. What does that mean? They that, that are belong, Christ. They belong, belong to Jesus. To yes, sir. They, they, they as, as Corinthians tells us, that we've been bought with a price. Don't you understand that you're not your own? Yes, sir. Those who, be, who realize, they understand, those who belong to Christ, automatically the fruits of the Spirit are going to be produced in their lives. 
And those who belong to Christ have done what? Have crucified the flesh. Uh-oh, go read it, brother. With the affections and They've lusts. They've done away with that old demonic, old nature of Adam. That rebellious nature of Adam. They, 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 they've crucified it. Done away with it. And it says, if we live in the spirit, let's do what? Let us walk also. Also walk in the spirit. What does that mean? To practice what we say. We yes, say we're children of God. We live in the spirit. Can't live in the spirit unless the spirit is alive in you. And you walk in the spirit of his word. Yes, sir. That's good. So what are we getting at? We're going to close out here in a minute. I got, but I have, have to read it. Because we have, I'll read these. I'm not going to read all of it. For one thing, for a person to name the name of Jesus Christ, you can't join up with Jesus like you join up with a, a natural church body or like you join a membership in a club. It, it doesn't happen like that. You're born into it. You're marked out. You already purchased. The blood of Jesus has been applied to your life. You've been purchased. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're born into the family of God. The DNA of God is placed in you by his Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and through his word, the anointed, wholesome, holy word of God. It's in you. You can't help but resemble him in your life. He's your father, he's your father. How many of y'all look like your fathers or mothers or whatever? A lot of people do. Somewhere or another. There's something in there. Might be something in your character that resembles. Believers look like our fathers. God wants us to, we're to bear the image of his son. The Bible says that. That's the truth. Our lives are going to resemble the life of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. But to claim that, to attest to that, to say I know, I believe, I, I join the church, whatever, and to not do it, that's the most dangerous thing there is. Now I'm just going to read these right quick because you've, all, all of this you've heard a million times, but I'm going to, I have to go to St. Matthew in the, the 12th chapter, 43rd verse, and I'll read it. It talks about what happens when a spirit leaves an individual's life. It says with the unclean spirit. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that's so unclean spirits. That's a, a word, the name of a spirit. It's like giving a blanket term. <clears throat> Say no, no one we talk about it, but we're getting this today. The unclean, a demonic entity that has lived in and with a person something from birth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he, this unclean spirit, will walk through dry places seeking rest and finds none. When a person confesses Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I confess Jesus and I want to get saved. Oh, praise the Lord. But they don't turn loose to this world. They never give in. They never become a captive of Christ. They're still holding on to themselves, their pride, or what, or either they, they just need a, a temporary escape from some misery that's haunting them in their life. So just because the truth under the anointing of God is being taught or preached, that unclean spirit will leave at the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, at the mention, the power that's in that, the name Jesus. Because Satan knows who he is. And, 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 man, he'll hang around, but he'll leave that individual's life alone. And they'll, they'll get 
sort of acclimated to being in the church, being a part of, of, of whatever's going on. A fixture. Used to seeing, you know, and, and through the years we've seen that. You don't want this to be you. To have been cleansed. God rids you of that unclean spirit and this spirit will leave you, could be a, say a spirit of, of hatred or a spirit of alcoholism, addiction, whatever. This spirit will leave and he'll walk around seeking somewhere, somebody else's life to occupy but he'll never find anybody else suitable for him like you. I really enjoyed living in that house, meaning in John, Peter, Paul, or Mary, whoever it was. I was comfortable in there. So he leaves for a while, but the Bible says, after looking around, he, he can't find a place to, to lay his head because the spirit can't manifest himself without a body. What's manifesting itself in your life? Think about it now. Without occupying the recesses of a human mind, a spirit cannot express who they are. Like, again, going back to the lion spirit, the, this lion spirit said, I'll go and I'll be a lion spirit in the mouth of his prophets. I'll get them to, through their minds, to think the spirit of God falling on them, I'll get them to lie and, and send this man to, uh, up to battle so he can die. People don't like to talk about demons. That's old fashioned, they say demons are real. Demon possession is real. So that spirit eventually says, I'm gonna to return to my house from whence I came out. And when he comes back to that person, that house, he finds it what? Empty. Nobody's living there. Jesus is not living there. He left. He was more or less evicted. But nobody else, Jesus didn't take occupancy up in, in that person's life. He didn't receive Jesus. You said, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, you open up, let me in. Okay. People don't let him in. They don't really let Jesus in. They want to be in charge. Of the, they don't want Jesus to come in as Lord and Savior. They want to maintain control, charge of their own life. Above God and everybody else. So this demon comes back. He, he sees no God in there. It's empty. It's swept. The person's life is, is, is cleaned up a little bit. And what? Garnished. It's decorated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With all the religious fixtures. the traditions of that local church body, whatever it is. They, they fit the king. But still, there's no Jesus. So this demon comes back. He finds it empty, swept, and garnished. He says, I'm going to fix it. Well, I'll never get kicked out of there again. So then goes he, and takes with himself, how many? Seven. Seven other spirits more wicked than he was. No telling what those spirits are gonna be. And they enter in, they dwell there, the last day of that man is worse than the first. That's what happens to people when they are exposed to truth and participate in it for a while. And, and people wonder, well, what happened to them? They seemed like they were doing all right. They get worse. And to mention some of the things that, oh man, some of the other demons that he brings murder spirits, just anything. The last state is worse than the first, and it happens as, as the Bible says, is it, is it in the book of John or Peter? This it happened according to uh, the true proverb. The dog is returned to his own vomit. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Yes, 
Dogs will eat something to make them sick. They'll puke it up. And they'll go right back. So I'm going to do it. And lick up that same mess. That puke them up. We get tired of the world. People do. People get tired of the, the confusion, the, the hatred, the uh, arguing. Uh, we, people can get tired of having a bad marriage. Of being the root problem in the bed. They get tired of just life going a certain way. And they change. They say, I need something. And they get hooked up with the church. But they don't get Jesus. You don't want that to be you. And the same thing that made the dog sick. He puked up. He'll go back and eat it up. The same thing in the world, the sin, the, the confusion, the hatred, the drunkenness, whatever it is. They'll go right back to the same stuff that made them, they'll turn right back to it again. Why? Because they've never had a change of nature. They're still a dog. The sow, take, take the little piggy, take it out of the mud. I'm going to give you a chance for a good life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat you, I'm going to cook you breakfast. I'm not going to make you bacon, but I'm going to make you some bacon. <laughs> I'm going to cook you some bacon. <laughs> Let you eat at my table. Clean the pig up, perfume it, tie a little ribbon around its tail, make it real pretty, and it'll be a nice little pet for a little while. But something the whole time will be pulling at that pig. It'll hear the rest of the pigs. The glee, the, the, the fun they seem to be having in the, in the mud pits. Oink, 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 calling, calling for him. That urge to never leave him. He'll fight it. He'll fight the urge. Because he's clean, he's nice. Got him a nice little piggy looking tuxedo cleaned up real good. But eventually, as soon as that pig sees an opening in the door, something's going to trigger it and it's running right back out to eat slop with the rest of those hogs. Why? It's a pig. It is a hog. It's used to slop. That's what it likes. And it never had a change of nature. Never had a change of nature. And I thank God through our Lord Jesus Christ, that he has given us a new nature, made us a new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise that we don't want to. You might slip up, you might, but no, God have mercy on me. That's not your life, you don't want that. And this is why we have to do this. We want to close out. And then he says in the book of Ephesians, and I'll get it, I'm going to just read it. Ephesians 6 chapter, 6 verse. And he tells us that finally, brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, be strong in the Lord. Don't be strong in selfishness or strong in, in your own self-will a strong and pride, all that, that's stubbornness. You don't want to be stubborn. Be strong in the Lord, man, and in the power of his might, the might of God. God can fix anything. God can do anything. And he tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Protect yourself. And sometimes people leave themselves unprotected. They leave themselves open to Satan, open to be wounded by Satan, open to be cut, abused by, by Satan. Put on the whole, you put it on. So God is not gonna, if he gives you protection, you have to take responsibility of using what God has given you. If God has given you weapons, use the weapon. He's taught us how to think, how to, how to, how to live, how to discern how to treat each other, how to love, how, what to deny, how to de deny ungodliness and worldly lust. He's taught us all that. We're to use everything that God gives us. 
And it says, you put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. What are wiles of the devil? His cunning, his craftiness, his trickery. His deceitful maneuvers. And sometimes we just go right, people just go right along with it. Put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand. So this is also telling us that if we don't put, if we don't use the armor, you're going to fall. You're going to fall to every whim of Satan. Anything, any way he leads you, you, you're going. That's the way you're going. You fall for anything. I, I know everybody's heard, heard the old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll do what? You fall for anything. That's the truth. If you don't stand on God's word, on the solid rock of God's word, if you don't stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't stand being strong in the Lord, you will fall at anything Satan throws at your feet. Stand for Jesus. Because if you don't stand, you will fall. If you don't put this whole arm on, you will fall. And he tells us that we don't wrestle. Our warfare, our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of dark, the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan's at work in this world. And you've got all kinds of various orders and ranks and files of, of, of demons, spirits of all sorts. And some, I believe in my heart, I believe it. Some people don't. I believe that God has assigned to us angels, guardian angels. So I believe that. I believe that Satan also, to, to a believer, he's assigned demons to impede their progress in the Lord, to, to, to try to break their faith in God, to destroy their families. And when they need reinforcements, he'll send them. The closer you get to God, the more heat you're going to feel from him. But praise God. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll be, be like the, you know, the old folks just talk about the, the Hebrew chilling. <laughs> Might be in the fiery furnace. But you'll be in the fire, you won't get burned. You feel, you, you you be in the air condition of God while you're in the, in the flames. Be in the water you, you, and you, you won't drown. God will keep you. He'll bless you. No matter what Satan throws with you, you go through trials, tribulations, whatever. But you stand on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand in God. Wear the whole armor of God and, and, and realize that, that, that your fight is not with Sister Carolyn or, 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 or Brother Brown. It's, it, it, our fight is not against flesh and blood. We are here as believers, spiritually born again, new creatures. We're spiritual beings, you know that. Spiritual people in, in a human body, in a body of flesh. We're spirits. New crea this new creation is not this stuff. It's a spirit. Who, that we've been made in Christ Jesus and we are in the middle of a spiritual warfare that's already been won. Come on now. It's already done. God, God's got it. He's got us covered. So he says, now what we do is our responsibility to wear the armor, to take the armor and use it. And some of you ex-military people, you, you, you know that, what, how important your armor is, your helmet, your, 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 your flag jacket, whatever it is they give you to use. That you use it. Use your training. They don't just give you the weapons, they train you on them too. You know how to use them. God's got us equipped. And if you don't use what God gives you, you will fall like a sucker every day to Satan. You, 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 you're not only, like, uh, don't leave a little crack, you'll open the door for him without knowing it. You'll open the door for Satan every day to have access to you, to your life. You don't want that. No, Jesus Christ is Lord. 
He's Lord. So it says we don't wrestle against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, so since you, you understand that now, that we're, we're involved in, in a great spiritual warfare, wherefore take unto you the whole arm um, of God. Uh, uh, no, no, he, I'm, I'm sure he meant that when you wake up every morning, God is going to stand you up and put, he's going to dress you. He's going to put the armor on you every day. No. He gives it to us, you use it. Dress yourself. Some people leave the house butt naked every day. They wake up like that, just spiritually naked. Just ain't got, ain't, ain't got a stitch on, you know, just, just walking out. Demons mess with everything. It's, just, it's crazy. Stripped, devoid of any spiritual resources, protection, weapons, nothing. You take me, we're to take, you take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and what? Having done all to stand. If you take the armor, not just for the sake of just taking it, but once you with the intent to use it, you will have done all you can do. God's got you. I, and I'm sure some of you have too. You, you've known men and soldiers, maybe some women too, who've, who've done all that they knew how to do, but they still, they were lost in battle. They were a casualty. Some of the great men of God, some of the apostles, some of the prophets were martyred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of the ones who, who spoke, who wrote this, yes, sir. were that died. Paul was killed, I believe eventually, after being in prison twice. But his time was, God was through. And he died giving his life for the glory of God. So once you use the armor, you will have done all you can do. God's got you covered. And then he says, you stand therefore having your loins, and you have to Picture yourself as being like one of those old Roman soldiers. Your loins, like to the upper thigh area, up to the chest, pelvic area, I mean, not chest, but pelvic area and waist, having your loins girt about with truth. Speak the truth, tell the truth, rely on the truth, and not just speaking the truth, or hear, but the truth of God's word. Have your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate, if you get wounded, in, you know, there's a, and I, I don't know, it, it was funny how somebody got shot or something in the leg. And they, they died. God have mercy. They bled out. I didn't know that there was a major artery running in the leg that if severed, if they just, you, um, quickly, yes, you'd bleed out. So God wants you to be protected. He wants you, your whole spiritual self, your whole spiritual person to be protected. So have your loins go about with truth, having on the breastplate of what? Of righteousness. Having your chest area protected. The breastplate of righteousness, a lot of vital organs up in, in the chest area, isn't it? Heart, lungs, liver, okay. Have, having on the breastplate of, of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Even you, 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 your legs are equipped with armor. Your legs and feet are equipped with armor. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking what? The shield of faith. Hallelujah. That, oh, all of these are important. But that's a good one. The shield is something you can manipulate, you can maneuver. The shield of faith. When they would fire arrows at the, old, at the soldiers in, in the old time, they would block them with the shield, you know? Thrust the spear, they'd block it with the shield and also use that same shield as what? A weapon. They could take your head off with that shield. You know, they, they used it all. All of it had purpose. All of God's word, everything that God has, has given us today has purpose to protect you in this life in, in the purpose of God for your life that you, he wants you to live. He's got us covered. So take the shield of faith. So when he throws a dart at you, as the Bible says, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be what? 
able, if, if you use it, you'll be able to do what? To quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That is interesting. To quench, to snuff out. You can be influenced by a demonic entity if you're not careful. Spirit of lies, spirit of hatred, spirit, just the spirit of unbelief. To the, almost to the point of hallucinating all kinds of spirits in this world. Jesus. And he didn't stop there, but that's, that's the end of the, the weaponry. Well, not the end of the weaponry, but the end of the armor. We're covered. And it says to pray, the saints of God, to pray always with all prayer and what? What is a, what's supplication? A request, a humble request to God. In your own. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, we're going to close out. All that we have, we have from God. Deliverance that we have. We've not achieved deliverance. We've not earned deliverance. We have received deliverance through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians, we're going to close out here. The 10th chapter. Starting with the third verse. Second verse. I'm going to close out. And Paul is telling the church. He says, I beseech you that I may, so that I may not be bold when I'm present with you with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Some people looked at him like he was just another, another dude and the things he's got to uh, deal with in the church, the situations he's, he's confronted with in the church, he can handle it with natural wisdom, but he's just another person that we have to deal with. Uh-uh. He, he realized he was in a spiritual warfare. He wanted them to know that too. So he don't think of us as, as though we just walk according to the flesh. Now that, Walk according. Some people do. We walk according to the flesh. Some people do. We might be in the flesh, but he's also letting them know we don't handle things according to our fleshly nature, our fleshly wisdom, or whatever, whatever it is. He says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, not just his, but ours, yours, the weapons of our warfare are not what? They're not carnal. You can't fight Satan with, with, your, with stubbornness. You can't fight Satan with, with your, the natural intellect. Or inte you, can't, you can't fight him with that. With sp the spiritual weapons of God. You have to be in the spirit. Be born of the spirit in order to use the weapons. And it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Of strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? A fortress. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Things that, that you, so oh God, it seems though you can never get over certain things. Yes, you can. If you use the weapons of God, if you use the words of God, if you use the, the, the sword of the spirit, if you use the, the, the armor of God, if you use prayer, as one preacher put it, as being like God's uh, uh, intercontinental or ballistic missile that you can send somewhere in somebody's life to resolve a problem. They're mighty through God through to the pulling down of strongholds. And, and that's the sad part. Men of God all over the world, sometimes you find it in, in your families and all, what's a stronghold? The strongholds of people's minds. Their mindsets. Well, they're stubborn. They refuse. Relinquish yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pull down those strongholds that Satan has erected in your mind through, with the word of God, through faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the love of God. Lo the Bible tells me love is as strong as death. That's the truth. Love is powerful. Love is the first gift of, 
the fruit of the Spirit is mentioned yes, is love. Yes, sir. Put to the, and we, we use these spiritual weapons. They're mighty through God, and that's what you have to use on your life, not on brother's life or, or this sister. That, no, it, it, where we help each other, certainly. But we have to use God's weapons on ourselves. We can't just say, as we said earlier, I believe, let me pull the moat out of your eye. But we have what? We got a beam. We have a big log in our own. We can't see ourselves. But I can see your sin. I can see where you need this and you need to do and you, uh-uh. Pull down those strongholds in your life, strongholds of pride and stubbornness. Re what, what is pride going to do? Pride will create rebellion. Yes, sir. What spirit does pride come from? Or rebellion come from? Hmm? Hmm? It's a, you can have a rebellious spirit. Where does it come from? Where does it originate from? What's, pride. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yeah. Intertwined. Different demonic influences at work in people's lives and they don't, they don't understand, they don't realize it. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. They stubbornly hold on to resentment, to anger, to malice, hatred, unforgiveness. What is that? That's idolatry. You worship yourself more than you do God. You think more of you, your feelings, than you do God. Be careful. People have to understand it. And it's time to grow. It's time to grow up. The weapons, and we're going to close out. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down what imaginations, evil imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And the weapons of God's word, the weapons of our warfare, will bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. That's what you want to achieve. That's where you want to be. Where you control your thoughts. Where your thoughts obey God. That you don't receive just anything that comes across your mind. You don't believe just anything that comes across your mind. You don't open yourself up to, 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 to accept the fiery darts of the wicked. You walk and you live in faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. That's what you want. And you want to stand as a soldier of God, a good soldier. You want to endure hardness. You want to have that long suffering. You want to have that endurance. And you want to, to let the fruits of God's, allow the fruits of God's spirit to manifest themselves in your life. Love, joy. What? Read them all. I'll say them all. Love, joy, peace, peace. long suffering, peace. meekness, peace. gentleness, peace. temperance. Peace. Faith about nine of them, isn't it? Faith. That's what, you, that's what you want to come out of you. What God put in you. Not the seed of something that Satan has sown in your mind. You don't want that. It'll, you want to keep your heart, again, with, with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Praise God. That's the message for the day. That's, that's God's word. I hope I hope it's delivered somebody. I hope it's delivered somebody. And, it, and if it has, that means some things are going to happen in your life, have happened already, and, and you're making some things happen with you and others today. Today. Praise God. Thank God for his word. And for what he's doing. And if you have not been saved, don't leave your, do you know that every unsaved person is open? I don't care how religious they are. They are open to demonic possession. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Yes. That, that's so true. Open. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyway, I thank God for his word. I thank God for taking care of us that we're covered. We are covered. 
Praise God. So let's give the Lord Jesus a big hand. That's God's word, this message for today. Thank you, Jesus. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.